Hello creative friends, welcome to another video where I'm going to talk to you about art business stuff. Now when I am making this, it is the time of the year that for most of us who do markets or just sell anything, it, this is the craziest time of the year. It is mid, no, early November, not mid November yet, but it might be when this video comes out. I actually don't know when I'm releasing it. The important thing is that I'm going to talk to you about being a greeting card designer today because it is now a year since I started doing that and I'm just going to tell you what I've learned over a year of doing that. Probably should have some greeting cards here to show you. Hold on, they're in a box over here. Okay, I just grabbed a big handful of greeting cards just to prove to you that I do make them. I don't know, I, don't, I didn't need to prove it to you. Uh, but this is just to show you kind of what my style looks like if you haven't seen it before. So I have You Did Excellent. My style is basically like a pastel brush on Procreate. Um, I also do pastels in real life too, but most of the cards are digital uh, digital pastels. So uh, I have like that. This one is cute. It says, you bake the world a better place. I have, hope your day is very nice. I also have art cards that are just like prints that I've done that I just made into cards like this one, which is very popular. They're in little um, plastic sleeves. Hopefully they're not too much glare. You can see them. I like this one. Hope you get whale soon. I get well card. I also have like this thank you card, which is a lot more of a simple design. And I have a couple that are just like really simple, but cute, like this little golden retriever puppy. This is just literally a handful of them. I also have like Christmas cards and ones for different holidays, but this is clearly the stack from like general, general cards. We'll put those back there. Okay, so I wanted to talk about everything that I've learned running my greeting card business. Now, if you've seen my channel before, you probably know that I run an art business, Lucky Spirit Studio, and I make uh, art, and that doesn't that is very broad, and, I, and purposely so, because I just like making stuff, and I do markets, and so on and so forth. But I decided last year to kind of do like a, like a sub-brand of my cards, so I have Little Sprout Cards, which is just, I don't, I don't know, it just seemed easier in my head to organize it if I made my greeting cards their own line, rather than just putting it under the big messy umbrella of all the things I make in my art studio. So that is what I've done. Over the past year now, I sell cards on my website and at markets and I wholesale them as well. So this is just a bunch of things that I wrote down on a note on my phone and also researched a little bit to fill in the gaps of things I learned in one year being a greeting card designer, seller, artist. Sound good? Okay. Let's just get into it. We don't have to um, do a big preamble. I think that I think I made that all clear. So lesson number one I learned from doing greeting cards for a year is that you have to know your card sizes. When I started, I, I just didn't really understand what card sizes were um, because I was doing art prints before. So a little context again, I've been doing my art business for like five or six years, um, but last year I got really serious about it. And that's when I started doing the greeting cards as well. So there are three greeting card sizes that you kind of need to know. And I, like I said, this is stuff I didn't know at all before I started, but there's A2, A6, and A7 sizes. In inches, those are an A2 card is 4.25 inches by 5.5 inches, which is like a small, the smaller size of card. An A6 card is 4.5 by 6.25 inches. And an A7 card is five by seven inches. So that matters because different suppliers that you may work with, if you're ever wholesaling, may have a preference for card sizes. So I prefer to make all my cards five by seven, which is an A7 size. That's because that's the size that cards are at like the grocery store or like any, any like commercial um, card shop you would go to. It's probably gonna be a five by seven or something close to that. I also just like the size, like I like the bigger card. Maybe it's because I'm very verbose and like to write a lot of messages. But anyways, but uh, one of the businesses that I wholesale to only likes a two size card, so the smaller one. And the difference for me is that my printer does a really good job making the A7 ones, doesn't make very clear A2 as soon as I scale it down. So I have to actually outsource for those ones. So just something to know, you may want to copy down those sizes if this is brand new information or just remember to look it up later. But uh, the retailers will usually go by the A2, A6, A7 system, as opposed to telling you the inches. You can look it up anytime. But I didn't know about those before I started, so there you go. The second thing I learned is that envelope quality matters. I do include envelopes with all of my cards. So that means that I am purchasing or getting them from my printer, depends on how I'm making them, which I'll get to the making of them in a little bit. 
I have found that people really like the envelopes with these pre, like you peel off the sticker and it's pre sticky. What am I trying to say? Pre-sealed, whatever. It's not the kind you lick, it's the kind you, that's already got a sticker on it. People seem to really like those and think of it as a higher quality envelope. I do all white envelopes on my cards uh, because it's just simple and I can just buy them in bulk. But you may want to do colorful envelopes, which you can certainly, that's, that is certainly a fine choice to make. My concern is that envelopes are not the thing that are generally going to make or break someone buying your card, unless you have like a very exquisite handmade envelope, I guess. And my priority was always to get the cost of that envelope as low as possible. So when I was starting out, I was buying, you know, a pack of 100 envelopes or something. But now that I do it more, I buy, you know, a thousand envelopes at a time. And every little cent matters because with greeting cards, the margins can be thin, especially when you're wholesaling. So if you can get your envelope from like 18 cents an envelope to like five cents an envelope, that matters when you're selling a couple hundred cards to somebody. And sometimes those uh, colorful cards are more expensive. So it may not necessarily be worth for your bottom line to use colorful envelopes. But again, that's something you can decide on. Third thing I learned is that paper sourcing is difficult, especially in Canada. So I'm Canadian based in Canada, in Nova Scotia in particular, if you're interested. And I have found what I think is my favorite paper. It is, wait, let me tell you exactly what it is. It is one-sided glossy 12 point paper. I don't have a brand name to tell you because I have only been able to get these through Staples Print Center, not for sale at Staples, but through their printing center. So I can send documents or whatever and get them printed on that paper, but they will only sell me 20 sheets at a time. And I think they actually may even have stopped carrying it in store and you have to like wait a week to get it shipped if you order on that paper. So this is bad for me because it's my favorite paper. It is like what you would find a commercial greeting card where it's glossy on the outside, smooth and matte on the inside for writing on. I have been able to find a paper mill in the US that uh, sells it and I will link that in the video description because I know a lot of my viewers are in the US but to ship them with the customs and the freight to Canada would not make that paper worth it for me anymore. So that's just, it's just been hard. However, I have found a matte paper that goes to my printer well that I can access, uh, that I do like. I believe it's a 120 pound cardstock and I get it from Michael's in their scrapbooking or like their paper section. It's just like a white cardstock in like a brick and it's pretty well priced. So I like that stuff and it looks good when I, uh, and it's nice to use, it looks professional, but my top tier paper is the one-sided glossy stuff. So if you are struggling with finding the right paper for your greeting cards, if you're making them at home, just solidarity, I, I feel that pain too. I think there's a lot of trial and error. In fact, I know there is because there's a huge pile of, I'm just looking at my printing station, uh, papers I have tried and not liked. <laughs> So there you go. But uh, you definitely want a heavier weight paper. Um, 12 point in that paper I was referring to is a way of measuring the weight of paper. Uh, there's so many systems across so many countries and measurements that I can't keep track of them all, but 12 point or like 110, 130 pound uh, cardstock, somewhere in there is good. But yeah, paper's a struggle. That's one thing I learned for sure. Another thing I learned is that you need to cover the big holidays ASAP. And the big holidays, uh, what I would refer to as the card giving holidays, are Christmas, birthdays, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. Um, those ones you should do right away. I basically spent the full calendar year creating cards every holiday as they came up, and I felt like I was always playing catch up. So if you are planning to do greeting cards and want to have like a full line of them, not just like card versions of your art prints, which is totally fine too, I also have those, um, then I would say aim for the, the, big, the big four, yeah. Birthdays isn't like a, you, you know what I mean. Anyway, but once you get those in your catalog, then uh, you will have something you can show to wholesalers or just have cards available for those high purchasing times of year. And birthdays obviously are year round, but um, people buy, I would say I probably sell Christmas and birthday cards. I probably sell the same amount throughout a year because Christmas you sell a ton one time of year and birthdays a bunch the rest of the time. That's my observation. Okay, the next thing I learned, let me read this off so I get the wording right. A strong cohesive visual style equals higher quantity purchases. Okay, so what I mean by this is that when somebody likes your art style, they are more likely to buy multiple things in your art style. 
as opposed to if your greeting card collection is very eclectic and you have like a little bit of everything and some things are like a watercolor and then you have like a fancy calligraphy and then you have like a bunch of things. I find that that means that customers will just buy the one they like and go. Whereas when people are buying cards, generally I do find that there's a good percentage of customers who will buy multiple cards uh, as opposed to just one-offs. And I think it's because when they find a card style they like, they're like, oh, perfect. These ones will be from me. Uh, this matches my vibe and what I give people. So therefore I will get some for a few upcoming occasions. I definitely have customers who will stand and these are, you get a lot of good data when you work at markets. So I, I this is in-person markets where I learned this. People will stand and look at my display, which is quite large and has like uh, five by five. So like 25 cards on display at once, I believe. And you can see all the fronts. And they will stop and look at them and they'll just be like, oh, I love them all so much. And they'll really like struggle over the decision of what one to get. And then if I'm doing like a buy, like five for 20 or five for 25 sale, then they want to buy, they want to take advantage of the sale. So yeah, I've just noticed that when you have that cohesive collection, that they all are recognizable as your art, um, that's a big benefit. Which is true for like any art business, of course, but greeting cards, I feel like because there's so many occasions, it can be tempting to divert off into different styles, but you should try and stay strong and stay true to your art style for them. The next thing that I learned is that besides the holiday stuff, the best sellers are local landmark cards and text-based cards. So I live in an area that is very touristy in the summers here in Nova Scotia, specifically Halifax. We have like iconic historical buildings. There's like Peggy's Cove Lighthouse. Um, even the Public Gardens has a beautiful big wrought iron gate that is iconic. So I have cards of all of these things. And those are some of my best sellers, either to uh, people who are visiting who just want a souvenir, like a postcard or just a regular card, people who are sending a gift to someone from away and want like a local representation in that gift. Um, or I, I don't know, other people buy them for other reasons, but but I know they do really well. And uh, so I would recommend considering if you have local landmarks you can take advantage of for cards. Additionally, cards that have text or sayings uh, seem to also do really well. Like I said, I do have a, several of my art prints just turned into cards and people do like those, but they definitely are being outsold by cards that have a funny pun like the You Did Excellent or any of the others with, with text on them. So definitely add text if you can. Uh, outside of holidays, those are the two that I think are important to have. Okay, a little bit more on the business side of things. One of the things I learned is that when you wholesale, it is done in quantities of six. I don't know why, it just is. Uh, there probably is a good reason for it. But anyways, uh, any wholesale account that I've ever looked at, also like if you're selling on FAIR or any of those like online platforms that wholesale, greeting cards are bought in lots of six. So um, that's just something to know to be prepared for and anticipate uh, when you're doing your wholesales that no one's gonna order like one of each of your cards, unless they're like not typically a greeting card resale retailer, um, something like that. But yeah, multiples of six. So um, just a cool fact about the industry, I guess, that I learned. Next thing, if you are going to try and wholesale your cards, I would recommend designing a catalog for yourself that you can send because obviously if you have a lot of card SKUs in your collection, you don't want to just send them like pictures of all of them. I just create a PDF catalog in Canva and I think it looks really cute. I update my catalog quarterly with new designs and I have them divided by category and like type of card inside. So the way that I've set it up, like I said, I just made it in Canva so it's not very complicated. I have a title page, which just says like what edition of the catalog it is, and then my business name and logo and whatever. And then I have the next page is about my business, just so they know what my whole deal is. And then it goes into several pages of products. And the last page is a how to order, processing times, shipping information, contact information. So like the technical stuff's at the end. And that's it, I just have it as a PDF and I can just email it to anyone who's like, let me see what you have. Um, you can also put your prices in there. Um, as well as like SKUs, I, I use, I made up SKUs for all my cards. I don't know, so that, that's that's really useful. And like I said, I update it quarterly, so four times a year. I also don't put all of my cards into my catalog. I leave out uh, a lot of the art print cards because some of them, um, some of them are just not. Okay, I wasn't gonna actually, this wasn't a point I was gonna make in this video, but I will say that I do have 
a selection of the cards that I've made that are like filler cards because I bring them to events and when a card has sold out, I don't like to have a gap on the display. So I will put in that design. It's a design that I know probably won't sell. Very rarely it does, but it's more just like cards that I just have on hand that are cute. I mean, I like them, but they're not ones that I know sell well. So I don't put those in my catalog because they're just in my head filler cards. And I always have at least two of them so that I can fill in a display if I sell out of something, which does happen. The next thing I learned is that you should make sure your prices line up. So that means both making sure that your cards are priced appropriately so that you get paid enough, and also that you are charging the same for your cards everywhere. If you are wholesaling, they will definitely want your cards to be the same price everywhere. So you need to make sure that you are starting from that position rather than having to price up when you eventually do want to wholesale. Now I'm doing a whole other video, maybe even a video series about pricing art stuff because people ask so many questions about it. So I won't go into it here. I will link the video if it's already up, which it probably will be. But when you're figuring out how much your card is going to cost, so the first thing you need to know is your base cost. So that is the cost of manufacturing the card. So that's printing either yourself or sourcing it elsewhere. Then the cost of your envelope and your packaging. And the packaging could be a little plastic sleeve it goes in. Uh, it could be a belly band, like a paper one, if you want to do a no plastic option. Um, and then also your time and labor into creating that. The time labor can be a little tricky to figure out because you have to figure out first, how much am I paying myself? Am I getting paid $20 an hour, $30 an hour, whatever that is. Then you have to figure out how many cards you can make in that time. Uh, and when I say make, that means both factoring in the making of the actual card, like folding it, putting it in the sleeve, whatever, and then also um, the time you spent designing it. So uh, these, these are a little bit variable. Again, if you want like a really in-depth pricing thing, I will do that in other videos, but you need to figure out that base cost. For me, when I do it, that base cost is about $1.50 uh, when I have to get the cards printed externally. When I print them at home, that cost goes down like to like 45 cents. So it's a pretty big difference. Then one way to calculate your prices beyond that is to take that cost, let's say it's $1.50, times it by two, th that would take it to $3 total. That would be your wholesale price. So you would sell cards to shops at $3 a card, which would mean that you're making $1.50 profit plus getting paid back for your labor and the materials that it took to make it. And then the shop would sell it typically at uh, double that, which is the retail cost, which would be in this case, $6. That also means that you, whenever you are operating as a retailer, which is what you're doing when you're selling on your online store or at a market, you are the retailer. So you have two jobs, you the manufacturer and the retailer, then the rest of the money goes to the retailer. So, so that means if your cart is $6 and you sell it at a market, then you are making 450 profit on top of paying yourself back for your time and materials. Most greeting cards are going to be in the range of like $5 to $10, with the low end being maybe a smaller size card and the high end being a more handmade card. But I find that uh, cards you get at the grocery store are very, very expensive nowadays. And I don't think it's necessarily justifiable with how expensive they are. I see cards for like, yeah, like a, like a printed to like a very normal greeting card, no bells or whistles or anything for like eight, $9. I, I don't know, I just find that very, very expensive, which is another great reason to support smaller card makers. Plus they often get a much cuter design. Anyways, you wanna do all that math beforehand, especially before you start wholesaling so that you make sure that you are actually getting some profit in there. And this question of pricing and how much cards cost also ties into the last point I'm going to make, which is that you need to figure out whether you're going to outsource your printing or do it at home. Now I do a little bit of both. I get my cards printed externally and I've used a couple different sources. Like I said, I've used Staples because I really like their paper, but I don't use their greeting card printing option. I have uh, when they had a huge sale on it and I could get the cards down to like 64 cents a card from ordering a large volume. Uh, that is a sale that happened like last Christmas, I think. So I'm hoping maybe it happens again. When you order it through their like card section, it comes pre-cut and scored down the middle with envelopes. So all you have to do is fold it in half, put them together, put it in a sleeve, you're done. It's very efficient, but it is still uh, 64 cents a card. And these are Canadian dollars I'm talking about, um, but just use it as a point of reference. So that's during this sale. When there's not that big sale on, 
And again, I'm talking about staples because there's it's very accessible and there's a lot of them, but you could also work with a local printer and these general principles are also going to be true. In order to get a good price, you're going to have to buy a large quantity of cards. And these scaling discounts apply per design, not per just how many cards you're buying in total, which really sucks because it's like when you get over a hundred cards, that's when you're starting to see some discounts, but you probably, especially if you're smaller, don't need a hundred of one design. Just, just a guess. I've never needed a hundred of one design except for um, like uh, corporate orders. So if you go on these sites, you'll find that if you're printing one, two, even up to 10 cards, they're gonna be charging prices like over $2 a card for printing. That's not sustainable for a business. That's okay for if you just need them for your friends or for like personal use, but that's not a price that makes sense for business. Because as I mentioned, uh, if you're wholesaling, like at those rates that I explained, like for my cards, my profit margin is $1.50. So it's, it's gonna disappear mostly if my printing cost is well over $2.50. So I mentioned that I don't use the greeting card pre-made thing at Staples. If I do use Staples, I go through their document printing service. I just get the cards printed on a full sheet and cut them myself. And I, that's where I'm able to get that one-sided glossy 12-point ideal paper. Um, and it's, I believe, a dollar twenty taxes in per sheet, which is not great, but um, it is a really nice quality and... I will mostly do that for cards that I'm selling at markets, so I'm getting the full cost up to the $6, as opposed to just getting the $1.50. Does that make sense? I hope that's clear. I know I'm talking about a lot of numbers. I have number dyscalculia, dyscalculia? Uh, number dyslexia. So I have to like really focus hard to make sure I'm saying everything accurately here. So hopefully that was clear. Well, that's getting your cards outsourced. And a couple other options for getting your cards outsourced. So like I said, you could use Staples, do like a document printing or use their greeting card production service. You can use Vistaprint. I found that that's very expensive unless you're doing a very big quantity. But again, a nice quality card. You could contact a local printer. Again, the cost is going to maybe be a little bit lower at a local printer than at one of the big commercial ones. But again, if you're trying to get the prices down, you're looking for volume to improve your margins. I have not tried sourcing my card printing overseas. I have had other things produced overseas uh, now and then. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big commitment because again, in order to make it worthwhile, you are ordering large quantities, but these are things to keep in mind maybe when you're further down the road, if this is a big business for you. So the other option other than outsourcing, which like I said, I do sometimes, but I also print at home. This is where you're going to want to find the paper that you like. You can test out a lot of different papers. Like I said, I currently mostly use a uh, matte cardstock 120 pound white um, in my printer and it is fine even though I would prefer the glossy one-sided. What can you do? It still makes a nice card. It looks good. The image is crisp. In terms of the printer, I get so many questions about my printer and I'm happy to tell you the one I have but I'm not necessarily going to recommend it. I have the Epson EcoTank 2400. I don't even know if they make the 2400. It's only a year old but I think they might have moved on to upgraded numbers. I don't know. Um, so I love the EcoTank because I have never bought ink since I bought this printer over a year ago, still on the original ink it came with. So that's huge considering how much I print and how many shows I manufacture for and all sorts of stuff. The thing that it doesn't do super well is it doesn't like heavy paper. So in order to print greeting cards, you kind of have to feed the sheets in one at a time. It is very time consuming and not practical. I have, this is my full-time job and I am just like home all the time. So I don't mind like watching a YouTube video and doing a little craft and also just like feeding a paper every minute. That's fine to me, but that's not realistic for most people. So that's why I can't say like, oh, definitely get the printer I have. I really like it. I think it prints beautifully. And like I said, ink costs, fantastic. But um, it's just an issue that I found with the Epson printers in general is that they don't like heavy mediums. So uh, paper media mediums. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye on. I believe that other versions of the EcoTank may not have this problem, but I do not own one, so I cannot confirm it for you. That is what I have to say about printers. Um, I will link the one that I have down below so you can look at it if you wanna see the specs. Um, it is a great printer and I use it for all my notepad, uh, stationary, other stuff. Um, it, like I said, it's great for ink. So um, I will put it there for your reference. Eventually I am going to invest in a big heavy duty art printer, 
but I'm just not ready to do that yet. So when I do, trust me, I'm gonna be talking about it a whole lot on this channel. So that's pretty much it. I think that's everything meaningful that I learned in my first year of running my greeting card business or greeting card sideline. I don't know what you wanna call it, but it has been a lot of fun. I love making greeting cards. It is fun to, it's sort of like designing or drawing a picture with a prompt as opposed to just using your free creativity. Like if I know I'm making a Christmas card, then it's like, okay, now I have parameters in which to try and draw. And it's more of a challenge. I just find it fun. And uh, it's also fun to see someone's eyes light up when they see one of your cards and it really resonates with them. I don't know, people are so cute, man. Like people at markets, I don't know. I've just had lots of really good experiences and people are very complimentary. And um, I just love seeing someone pick up a card, read it, laugh, call someone else over and be like, look at this. And doesn't it remind you of somebody? It's just, it's the cutest in the whole world. This is why I also love doing markets. Like even the ones that are stinkers, there's always gonna be stinkers. Um, you learn so much about people and what they like that it's the best kind of market research for an art business. So um, yeah, I won't wax poetic about it. This video has probably been long enough, but those are my thoughts on greeting cards. Where'd my cards go? Here they are, dropping them everywhere. This is, this is, I'm very proud of all of these. And I think they're very cute. So um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was insightful. If you made it this far, um, you clearly care about greeting cards. So therefore I wish you very well in your greeting card business. It is fun and cute and creative and also feisty. I've, uh, the greeting card world turns out there's drama in it. I'm not part of any drama, nor am I about to propagate any or um, share any, but just, just uh, I just make cute cards and tell you about it. If you like this video, I have lots of others. If you haven't checked them out, maybe you have, in which case, mwah. I adore you already, but if you haven't and want to check out more, I have like studio vlogs where you can hang out with me and see what my creative life is like. I have tutorial videos where I teach you how to make stationary products or give you business advice to run a little creative business like mine. Um, and I probably do other third category that I don't remember. Hope you have a really great day wherever you are. Make some cool cards. I hope you make some people smile with them. Okay, love you, Mwah. bye.